A woman once tried to steal my baby brother, insisting he was her baby. My dad drop kicked her in the stomach. What is the coolest thing your dad has ever done? Saw this older kid hit another younger kid in the head with a hockey stick while we were driving past. He slammed on the brakes, jumped out, took the hockey stick away and broke it to bits. It made that kid walk home and make his parents come outside. My dad told them what he had done and why his stick was broken. They thanked him for what he had done and shook his hand. We didn't even know that kid or his family. Embracing at the time, but pretty cool now. Both dads are pretty badass in this story. A lot of crappy suburban dads would flip out at another parent for this. I was only 6 when me and my dad walked into a candy store, when we saw a man in a mask threatening the cashier with a baseball bat. He came up behind and just punched him right in the back of the head knocking him out cold. We got some free candy that day. I hope your dad knows he is the champion of champions. My dad's just pretty awesome. He drives 20 miles out of his way every single day so that I can go to a better school. He works 3 jobs but he always makes sure to spend time with me and my brother. He does so much for us. Like the other day, the power was out at our house. Me and my brother don't live with my dad, and it was getting late. So even though he had to be up at 5 the next morning, he still came to our house to get us so we could stay the night. I guess he's never hurt anyone to protect us, but he does take good care of us. He sounds like a great dad. When I was in high school I got beaten up by three guys. One of them hit me so hard that it broke the skin just under my eye, which I got 4 stitches for. In addition, I had deep bruises all over my chest and arms. After my mom took me to the hospital to get fixed up, we went to the cops. The cops pressed us all charges and also called the school, which suspended them for a week. So the next day, I had to go to class with that eye completely swollen shut, with those black plastic stitches sticking out of my wound like twist eyes, and bruises on most of my face. People naturally asked me what the frick happened. I told them, of course, I didn't exaggerate about what happened. Even if I wanted to, I didn't need to. The truth was bad enough. So during class I get called to the principal's office. He tells me that people all over the school are talking about it. Then he has the gall to tell me, while looking at what they did to me, that I have to stop telling people what happened or he'll suspend me for two weeks for making the school a hostile environment for the three guys. When I get home, I tell my parents. My dad has one of those reactions where he starts to flip out, but clamps down on it. He takes the phone into my parents' bedroom and calls the school. I never heard what he said. The next day I get called into the principal's office again and he practically stumbles over himself to apologize profusely. That was the last I heard of it. From the way he acted, you'd think my father was Liam Neeson or something. I was under the assumption that he was Liam Neeson. I decided to brew my own beer once. It went pretty well. I need some beer bottles. My dad said he had some old stubbies in the attic from his home brewing days. I thought that was kind of cool, why not? We went to grab them, and actually found a few cases that were full too. Men being men, we decided to ignore the fact they had been sitting in a hot, humid attic for 25 plus years and try it. My dad went first, he opens it, takes a massive swig, swallows, and passes it to me. He says wow, it's still pretty good. So I took a huge swig. What an butthole. The beer was only partly liquid. It was full of ancient mold chunks and tasted like old milky dog farts left in the sun. So I imagine. I spit it out all out. It was a great troll. We talked about it later. And he had no idea the beer was rancid. He just managed to not make a face and swallow it. It was probably only yeast. My dad played professional soccer. After he retired he went back to the first neighborhood little club he started at and started coaching. Mainly children and one of the main teams. All of these for free. He coached until the cancer got the best of him. When he died, the hearse stopped in the middle of the field. All the players gathered around and with one hand in the hearse and the other one in their hearts they sang the club's song one last time for him. I held my brother and cried like I never cried before. He was my dad. My hero. No worries. Cancer never got the best of him. Maybe the worst, maybe some better part, but certainly not the best. You and those he affected as a part of the club got the best, that's for sure. 
I was crossing a street and didn't see a minivan that came hurtling around the corner doing probably 60 miles per hour on a 25 mile per hour road. Fortunately for me, my dad saw it, grabbed me by the collar and yanked me back, jumped forward, and punched the minivan as it went by. I was in maybe second grade. I'm still convinced my dad is a closet badass. My dad used to be a truck driver in Florida in the 80s. One night he's at a restaurant in Miami with my mom who was his girlfriend at the time. He spies at another table his boss with another man in a very expensive suit. The boss catches my dad's eye and gives him a cheers with his drink. The boss then starts whispering and the mystery guy's here who then motions for the waiter. The waiter proceeds to bring my future parents a pricey bottle of wine with the message being it was personally from the doctor. My dad's boss had previously mentioned a silent partner in his company who was always proud of my father's quick and incident free driving. This doctor who had just sent them the wine was very easy for my dad to identify, none other than Pablo Escobar. My dad had more likely than not been driving extra packages for his boss and Escobar. My dad raised a glass to them, paid his check, dragged my mom out of there and quit that very Monday. Values and morals may not be cool, but that story gave me immense respect for my pops. About 7 years ago, we used to live in a shady part of the city. A lot of criminal activity would happen but never directly to us. It was a normal Monday, I had just gotten back home from Taekwondo class. My bathroom was far from my room so I was walking across in my briefs when I look out the window and a shirtless man jumps our fence into our yard. He runs up to the window, looking crazed covered in sweat. He began to scream, help they're trying to kill Emmy you have to let Emmy in. My father goes up to the window demanding the man to leave our property or we'll call the police. My mother sensing the tension escalating, puts me in a closet. Out of sheer coincidence, there is a tiny hole in the wall and I'm able to watch this all go down. The man in an indescribable bout of rage, starts punching out our windows, breaking them apart with his bare hands. He starts to climb through pushing aside a 300 pound arm while we had like it was a lightweight chair. He's spilling blood everywhere. He's so twitchy and shaky. He begs my parents to let him hide in a room and tries to run around them to get in. At this point my father is standing his ground. My mother is constantly dialing 911. You can hear the operator on the other end get frustrated and she yells at my mother to calm down and that she sent a squad car over. She hangs up on my mother. When she runs back to join my father, the man breaks loose and hits her. What proceeded, I can only describe as the most incredible butt handling I've ever seen dispensed by my father. In a flurry of punches and kicks, he just owns the man and beats him all the way out into our backyard, kicking him out. The man jumps our fence and runs into our neighbor's garage. Half an hour later the lone squad car shows up. They bring out the man and call an ambulance for him. They take care of him and cover him in a blanket and give him water. They just ask us if we're okay and leave. A few days later we find out that the man was under the influence of some shoddy crack. He was released on bail the same day. I just can never forget how strong my parents were and how amazingly badass my father was. I'm so thankful they were there that day. There is a crazy, threatening man in our house. We'll send someone over in a half an hour to see how it turned out. Once we were canoeing down the river where I grew when I was like 5 and we stopped for lunch or something like that. While I was having the best time in the water at sandbar we had stopped when a copperhead started swimming towards me. He straight up grabbed a bee by its tail and threw as hard as he could up against the tree killing the snake. At that age that was the coolest thing that I had ever seen. My dad studied his butt off as a child teenager rather than being a scrub and as a result I grew up in upper middle class America as opposed to the third world country he grew up in. This needs more upvotes seriously. Doing your best to take care of your family financially comes before anything in the day and age we live in. Good for him and you. My dad rocks. He used to take me to work with him. Took me hunting. Made me do chores so I didn't turn out to be a lazy butthole. And gave me the old crappy car that our family didn't want anymore. He had it painted for me. Because he's awesome. My mom always threatened me with a spanking from him when I was being bad. But I can't once remember him putting a hand on me. It worked anyway. One instance of him being awesome stands out. One time when I was 5 years old. I was digging a hole with a plastic shovel. 
Why? Because I was 5. I didn't need a reason. Anyway, I dug right into a yellow jacket nest, and those little bastards were pee. They swarmed me, and I vividly remember one of them landing right on my eye and stinging me in the cheek. He appeared, saved me from the wasps by carrying me back to the house and brushing them off of my body. My mom thought he was beating me, though he never put a hand on me in anger. It turns out he got stung more than I did. I got stung 3 times but he got stung a lot because he was knocking the bugs off of me and not worrying about himself. He later told me that I was just running as fast as I could in place because I was 5 and panicking. Also he almost beat up a guy at a Braves game because he was holding up a sign in front of me and I couldn't see. My dad rocks. I am entrusting you my upvote and demand that you give it to your father first chance you get, in the form of a hug. My dad raised me by himself while going to college full time and working full time. He would often go without eating to feed me. Every night before I went to sleep, he would ask me who's the smartest kid in the world at first I answered I dunno thinking there are a lot of kids in the world and I probably haven't met the smartest one yet. He would always correct me by saying you are. Eventually I started saying I am. I asked him about it years later and he said the first class he took after got me was a child development psychology class. Basically he was trying to trick me into being smart lol. I get to pay him back a little bit this year while we're both deployed at the same time haha. <laughs> Going to be providing overwatch to his unit among others. I got myself into a stupid situation when I went to a convention 11 hours away and got ditched by the 3 people I went with. I had a rental car and would have ended up paying hundreds of dollars I didn't have to return the car in another state and fly home. My brother drove my dad to the airport an hour away so he could fly out and come get me. Then he drove me and the rental car home the entire way. I couldn't stop thanking him. And he goes, are you kidding me? I got a chance to fly out and save my baby girl. I wasn't going to pass that up. He liked being the hero that day. Little does he know he was already my hero before that. My dad came home one day from work with a huge grin on his face. I asked him what was up, and he said Superman 08. I heard a clip from this band, and I just knew you would love them, so I stopped off on my way home and bought you their album. Here it is. I just know you'll love it. I assumed I was either getting trolled, or I was about to have to muster up my best poker face and pretend to like some random CD. The album he handed me was the 59 sound by the Gaslight Anthem. I love that album. I love that band. I have no idea how he knew how much I would love it from one clip of a song. But he did. One time one of my sisters, ex, friends beat up his girlfriend, also her friend, and slashed four of her expensive tires. My dad went to the city where he lived and shouted up to the floor the dude was living on, calling him a P and a punk butt and whatnot. Mind you my dad is like 55. He ended up picking up a rock throwing it up in the air one time, and then throwing it into the kid's window, breaks the window and hits the kid in the head, all on the first try, there were 6 20 something year old dudes in the apartment and none of them did jack crap, the guy paid my sister back for the tires, I love my dad, your dad has problems rounding corners because of the sheer weight of his balls, I really hope someone sees this, when I was about 8 9 years old, some friends and I were playing baseball in the street, just like kids used to do. Some older kids, about 12-13 came riding up on their bikes. My friends and I, there was about 5 of us, had never seen them before. They started talking and telling us they lived on a street a few blocks away, and whatnot. Not sure what really happened between us learning their names and where they lived and what was about to happen, but they started throwing rocks at me. They singled me out. Probably cause I was a chubby little red-headed freckle-faced girl and an easy target. Well I ran inside, told my dad what had just happened and without missing a beat he ran out the back door, in his socks, grabbed the sledgehammer that happened to be by the back door. We were in the process of breaking up our driveway to put in a new one, and ran. 6 foot, 240-ish pound angry mother sucker ran like a pro. The kids see him running at them and take off on their bikes. He throws a sledgehammer tomahawk style and catches the tire of one of the kids, after he ran about 10 houses down and they were finally getting away from him. The kid falls, and fall hard. My dad screams, what, you don't like when bigger people are throwing things at you you little mother sucker. The kid is screaming and crying stop, 
Please. Stop. While he quickly gets back on his bike and continues to evade my dad. My dad starts running back to the house and says to me let's go. We jump in his truck and start going the way the kids did. I told him what street they said they lived on and we drove up and down. We never caught them. But I never seen them again. TL. DR. Dad made kids probably crap themselves after they threw rocks at me and they were never seen again. Despite the fact your dad could have killed that kid, I would still shake his hand and buy him a beer. Any man that can throw a sledgehammer with any degree of finesse is a good man, says I. When my stepdad threatened my life, I called my dad and he came over. He stared down my stepdad with a look that could burn through metal as I packed my things and walked out. He rode a horse into a house party, rode it around the living room, and out through the kitchen. I still have no idea how he got it into the house. He was 57. There's a school parking lot and a basketball hoop across the street from my childhood home, in a quiet residential area. When school was out for the summer, this group of guys would regularly pull into the parking lot and blast loud music while playing basketball. When my dad asked them to be quiet, they ignored him. He called the police with a noise complaint several times, over a month or two, but that never worked because they would just turn their music back up as soon as the police drove away. So finally my dad went over while carrying an axe and told them he'd smash the car's windows and hack out the stereo if that's what it took to shut them up. They immediately left and never returned again. After the first sentence I 100% expected to be bel -aired. This hopefully won't get buried because it goes through my mind every single day. My dad was a truck driver his whole life. That's all he really knew. That, and how to be the best dad a kid could ask for and then some. About 4 years ago at the end of the school year, my dad was in a terribly bad tanker accident where his 8800 gallon tanker truck plunged off an overpass and exploded because somebody drove into the side of his cab. He knew that if he didn't swerve he would kill the guy driving and also a lot of other people would be hurt killed. He did the only thing that he knew, and that's to put another person before himself. I think that what he did was pretty brave. He is a hero to me. I miss him more than words can express, and what an awesome man and father he was. He noticed a water snake slithering up to 5 year old me and straight up grabbed a fallen tree trunk and dropped it on top of the snake repeatedly until it died then took me tubing. Until it died then took me tubing. What a nice snake. My dad once took me to the cinema to see Alien 4. The lady in the box office told me I wasn't allowed to see it because I was below 16, 10 or 11 at the time. My dad told her he was paying and that he'd take me inside no matter what. The lady just kind of shrugged and turned her attention to the next customer. I realize this may seem rather lame, but my dad was an alcoholic who killed himself when I was 15. And this memory always kinda stood out in contrast to all the other things he did. Despite that, I do still miss him. This isn't the coolest but these are some examples of sweetness from my dad. When I was growing up my dad was very poor. And I mean that he would have about one or two full meals a week dart my parents were divorced and he lived in a small moldy apartment. When I came over he would let me have any meal I wanted, and would get me anything I wanted when I was 10 I wanted a book bag very badly, and my mother wouldn't buy it the book bag was $50, of course he got it once I wanted a $200 bow. He got it and do you want to know something cool that bow had my name carved into it, yes my name, all 8 letters of Angelina, and it was pretty freaking sweet. AWW your dad is a super awesome dad. I was my mother's first child, and though the doctors told her that natural childbirth wouldn't be a problem, let's just say I got stuck on the way out. The doctor, being somewhat dense, casually announced that they could simply stick forceps into my mom, squish my head, and use the forceps to pull me out. He commented offhand that this would only lower the baby's IQ by 10-20 points. I'm told my father, normally a quiet, cheerful man, grabbed him by his shirt front lifted him bodily off the floor, and, to quote, informed him calmly he would be finding another way. Mom had an emergency c-section, and though by that time I came out blue from lack of air, we both survived intact. My sister and I were in the car with our dad, and we were both around 5 stroke 6 years old. We had to take this really complicated shortcut to school, because California traffic, and got in a car wreck. The guy in the other car was a total nutcase. 
He thought my dad had been following him down this complicated shortcut and started babbling on about a friend in the FBI who would fix this for him. Then the crazy guy saw us in the back seat and said something along the lines of you're gonna get your kids taken away. Here's something about my dad. He had just got done in a two year custody battle against our drug addicted mother and the camel's back done got broken. I've never seen a bigger switch between casual, nice guy dad and bone thugs and I'll frick you up in my life. My dad got in this guy's face and literally tore him apart. Not by swearing or threatening, but by being straight intimidating. I still get goosebumps thinking about it nearly 20 years later. I knew, on that day, that I should never, ever get in a serious argument with my dad. Comma literally tore him apart. When I was in 8th grade, I wanted to try out for cheerleading but one of the required stunts was a back handspring and I couldn't land one. I mentioned how frustrated I was, and he said, come on. We went out to the backyard, and he proceeded to throw a round off back handspring. After I got back the ability to talk, I asked him how he knew how to do that. Turned out he was a gymnast in high school and that he'd nearly broken his neck once by landing on his head after a faulty rings dismount. He worked with me the rest of the afternoon, helping me get it right, and never mentioned how badly his back was hurting. He was 44. When I was 12, I went to work with my dad. He was a cable guy, not your normal inside the house install guy, no, he was the guy who put it on the poles 50 feet up in the air. We had stopped to get some drinks and snacks around noon. We go inside, and as we're about to pay a lady comes running in and says that some guy is going through my dad's truck. My dad turns to me, says stay here, drops his stuff and bolts out of the door. The guy saw my dad running towards and and put two and two together and took off. Luckily, my dad was in beast shape and caught the guy. He zip tied his wrists, as temporary handcuffs, and called the police. He then calmly walked back in, picked his stuff up, and paid for our drinks food. I was buying a knife for my girlfriend for her birthday while at the mall with my dad. I was, I think, 18 at the time. I bought a knife he said wasn't legal to own. Massachusetts has some pretty strict knife laws, and we had a disagreement on the matter. On the way home, we see a cop car ahead of us. We joke about following the car and asking him. The officer pulls into a restaurant parking lot, so my dad follows him, parks, and turns to me. Looks like we'll get to ask him after all, he says. He casually walks over with an excuse me, officer and begins talking about laws regarding knife length as I come over. At one point in the conversation, he pulls out his knife, he's an electrician, and says, now, something like this would be okay, right? It's a little under 1.5 inches. The cop pulls out his knife and compares it. The entire time, I'm just standing there completely unsure what to say. Additionally, I later had to admit that my dad was right. TL. DR. My dad had a non-violent knife standoff with an officer he followed by car just to prove a point about knife laws. They've played Niffy Spoonie before. My dad and I was walking through a fire break when a rattlesnake curled up, ready to strike. Dad, who always carried his cold pistol on his side when we were in the woods, pulled his gun, shot the snake between the eyes and holstered the gun in one, fluid two second motion. That man is Doc Holliday with a pistol. My dad, who is very white, and very Jewish, used to spend a lot of time at flea markets. Once, he tried to bargain down a Chinese couple on a TV. I was maybe 10 at the time, so 20 years ago, they were asking $100, he offered $50, at which point the wife said to the husband in Chinese, this stupid American will pay whatever we tell him to, so the husband said $100 final offer and my dad walked away hours later we passed back by and the tv was still there my dad said again 50 dollars they said 75 dollars dad said no and they took the 50 dollar for it as my dad was loading it onto our cart he said to the couple in perfect mandarin chinese because he went to dli when he was in the air force i would have paid 75 dollars if you hadn't called me a stupid american tl dr my Jewish dad spoke Chinese to a couple at the flea market who had previously insulted him in Chinese. And this is why everyone should be bilingual. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.